Well, our key recommendations were formulated 15 years ago and the world is radically different now. And I'm sure they would be different in the light of that. But that being said, just a little story. When uh, the uh, government, current government set up the Dilnot Commission, one of the Labour peers came up to me in the corridor and after saying deja vu, he said, you know what they're saying down there in the whip's office? And I said, no, he said, we should have done it when we had the money. And that's probably the right answer. The trouble is the government just didn't do anything for the next 12 years. And that's the, that's the weakness. Well, what I would like to see is uh, a, a commonness of approach between health and social care. And that um, we shouldn't be in the situation where apparently, if you have a health need, you get care free at the point of delivery. If you have a social care need, you don't, you're means tested. They should both be on the same footing. It probably means that some of health care would be means tested as well. But I think that's probably uh, a more sensible way of doing it. The care bill has some references to the importance of integrating provision, but they're insisting on this as a responsibility of local authorities at a time when local authority budgets uh, probably haven't been worse. <laughs> and that's, that's a tall order. Uh, I, what I'd like to see the government doing is actually integrating health and social care budgets and setting up uh, community groups in the local area who will do commissioning of health and social care under a single budget according to the needs of individuals in front of them. I think there is a worry and there will be voices crying woe on both sides and the councils will say well we've already been cut by 2.8 billion, they're saying that now and how do you expect us then to take on extra costs and that's a real and fair question and the government have to give fair and clear answers even if the answer is actually we're in a time of real austerity but if that's the answer what I would like to see and I've asked uh, this for this in the House of Lords a commitment from the government to say that as we come out of austerity there will be a reordering of priorities and that this particular need will be very high up the list. Yeah. On that last point, yes. I think co-payment was actually the key phrase in our Royal Commission, rather than free. And uh, the services to be provided were never wholly free, because there was always a co-payment element. And I think that's the right principle, especially at the moment. But, but in terms of uh, the, the, the other questions you're asking about the benefits, uh, there's far too much focus on this. Uh, and I think it's a question of what's seen as fair and equitable rather than what will make a huge financial difference. But yes, it does seem silly that uh, well-off pensioners are even moderately well-off and I'm moderately well-off. I don't need the £200 or whatever it is we get. And so for us, it just goes into, we have a little budget where we um, give to charitable purposes and this goes into that and, and it's distributed. I think there are different questions about the others, however. For example, public transport. If you took away elements of the bus pass, transport services around the country would collapse. I took part in the debates around the bill that set up the current CQC and many of us were very worried because uh, the previous government, which was sponsoring this bill, uh, had in fact changed the structure of quality assurance in this area four times, I think, within about six years. And they never let the system settle down. And we asked, well, is this it? Will it work? And we didn't get a clear answer to that question, and it's not working. 
At the same time, however, additional responsibilities are being given to the CQC, and I find this astounding. They're going to have to check the financial uh, viability of care home providers. Uh, that CQC has never been set up to do that, doesn't have the expertise. And the new uh, inspector of uh, hospitals is going to be, I was told, because I asked, under the CQC. And so it has an additional responsibility being given for a major, uh, they, they, they call it Ofsted type uh, inspections. Well, I tell you, the chief inspector of schools has a very different structure on which he operates than the one being proposed now. So I have no confidence this will work. Well, I, I, I think, uh, yes, because the tasks being given, um, I don't think they've been thought through properly. That's one point. But of course, on the other side, uh, hospitals are depending on untrained and unqualified staff to carry out a whole range of care duties. There is now uh, an, an insistence that there will be a degree of training. That's excellent. The other thing is pay. If you pay people uh, very small sums of money, and I tell you, they find this in some uh, care homes and, and parts of the country. Towards Christmas, they get better pay going stacking shelves in Tesco, so they leave and you've got a staffing problem. Now, if that's the reality, of course there will be failures of care. And we've got to find ways of ensuring that there are qualified staff that uh, are, are paid a wage that is competitive in the market in which they operate.